Hello, everybody. You get to hear my insanely luscious and beautiful voice again. Um, I'm not Markiplier, so let's get into this right away. Okay, so today I'm going to be reviewing and rating all the FNAF games, starting with FNAF 1. Now, first we're doing easy to hard. This is just going to be a simple rating based on the hardness of the gameplay and everything. I think this is the easiest FNAF game. It's hard at first, but once you get the hang of it, it is pretty easy, except for 420 mode. I have not beat 420 mode yet. Probably never will. Um, this is actually relatively easy once you get the hang of it, but in general, I think it's about medium. This one, it was hard. It took me a long, long time to beat this one. I think the lures and everything with, with Springtrap was just... It was hard. This, <laughs> I haven't beaten this one yet, guys. I have not. This one I find super hard. I just, everything with the vents and everything is just hard. This one, it's in between super hard and hard for me. I haven't beat this one yet because I can barely hear the breathing. And most of the time I can't even hear it. But once you get the hang of everything, it's probably about medium. But for me, it's it's probably around the super hard. Sister location. This one, I say hard. Night 4 on the Xbox is just the worst experience anybody could ever, ever deal with in their life. Um, Night 4 is just a freaking... It'll melt your brain. Anyway, FNAF World. I haven't played FNAF World. Seems pretty fun. FNAF AR, I've played a little bit of it. I've watched a lot of the Daco videos, though, that he's done. It, it it looks about medium, but I can't rate it. I haven't played it enough. Ultimate Custom Night. This is impossible to rate because of all the different things you can do in it. You know, 50-20 mode is obviously super hard. But for me, even just... The FNAF 1 animatronics are hard to deal with, so I'd say Ultimate Custom Night is hard. Now that is the first thing out of the way. Let me switch this to actual game ratings. Here we are, guys. Now I'm going to be rating the games based on how good they are, and in my opinion, everything is in my opinion, because everybody has different preferences. Starting with number one. This is one of the best. For the most simple, I'd say it's great. It's not quite amazing. Although it is very good, it's it's not very... It doesn't have a lot of replayability because nothing is different. It's the repeated game mechanics just at different, you know, difficulties. The mechanics are great. The game is amazing. Everything is great about it. I think some of the best jump scares, in my opinion, out of all the games. Um, this is great. If it wasn't for nostalgia, I just put it at good. <laughs> but this one, this same situation is FNAF one, but I think better. Um, again, same repeated game mechanics, not very replayable. Um, but this is uh, this is my favorite FNAF game. I think it's really good. I love all the mechanics. It's hard, but it's also super fun. I'd say amazing. Um, I'll go over the lore about all these games after I'm done with the basic gameplay review. Let me do FNAF 3. I'm going to do them all in order. This is good, okay? Um, again, not very replayable. Uh, the lack of animatronics in this one kind of takes away. But the lore, I think, um, I think the lore really, really, um, you know, makes up for that. You know, Springtrap is the only rail animatronic. The Phantoms are all, you know, hallucinations. Um, but in terms of gameplay, this is good. Uh, FNAF 4. Uh, this is pretty good. Um, I'd say great. It's, it's very hard. <laughs> it's hard, for sure. Um, it's hard, but it's very fun. And I think it's, it's got some of the best mechanics in the game and visual wise i think they're all 
I just realized I made a very, very bad shape with that. Um, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> but sister location. <laughs> this one is amazing. It, it's super, it's unique. It's nothing like FNAF, but it still is FNAF. Like, it's super unique and different. You know, open range stuff, brand new mechanics, everything. This is just gameplay. We're not even talking about the lore right now. This one is good. The knights are a little bit worse than the others. But everything about it, I think it's pretty good that you can build your you can literally actually build your own pizzeria with it, as well as doing a real, you know, night shift. Ultimate custom night. I haven't played FNAF World, like I said. Haven't played that enough. Haven't played um Help Wanted before. Haven't played Freddy in Space 2. Um Ultimate Custom Night. This is I know as much as I want to rate it higher. The jump scares were just, I'm sorry, I just did not like the jump scares, they just weren't. Everything else was good though, the jump scares were just the, the, the worst part. Alright, now we're talking about lore. Everybody knows this, this, and this specifically go in the amazing tier for lore. And I'll explain why. Um, first, I want to do everything in order. This is the 1993. I'm going to try and sum up all the lore the best I can. I'm going to fail. I already know. But this is the 1993 location. Um, this was after FNAF 2. We find out about um, everything that happened like, you know, Bite of 87, then FNAF 2 comes in with the puppet, um, Amazing War, again, I think, I think this will go with good for lore-wise, I mean, okay, actually, okay at lore-wise, no, good at lore, um, because it sets up everything for the entire universe, but it doesn't have a lot of lore in it. This one is, I think, around the same, um, even though you have the mini games, actually no, great. The mini games really help it. Then of course the puppet um, was the first spirit, I think. Uh, this was, you know, 1987. You know, before FNAF one, FNAF three. This amazing, amazing lore. We know that um, Springtrap is William Afton, and we figure out that this location was set 30 years after. FNAF, um, FNAF 1, I think, uh, so 2023, of course, this is, this is William Afton, um, and the mini games, so good, okay, I know I sound like a freaking fanboy right now, but I'm serious, the mini games are perfect, the mini games explain the lore and everything, and how William Afton, um, you know, did everything, and then, the final mini game is where all the the four kids are in the room, and then he's there, and we come in, and then um, William Afton gets inside the spring body suit, and that's how Springtrap is born. There's so much lore, like seriously, everything about you know William Afton and you know the original animatronics in this game. This game explains so much. This. The mini games, this such good lore, because this, this explains Fredbear's Family Diner, 1983. This was the original bite, um, which was ha what happened to Crying Child, um, from Fredbear. And then, of course, it got rebranded re to uh, Freddy Fazbear's, which is um, the FNAF 2 game. Then it got rebranded to this. But we got to talk about Sister Location. Sister Location, this one amazing lore again this talks about baby um and I also have like I love how William Afton is a security guard and I think every single game um I think and of course Henry is in this one um but this one such good lore everything about it baby oh my gosh entered everything 
Um, and I remember something about the Stitch Wraith in the books, which is like, um, you know, it's like innard, but different. And of course, the Afton Amalgamation and all that stuff. I won't get into the, the books right here, but um, this great lore, these three great lore, this one, great lore. It might just seem like a normal pizzeria simulator, but no, it actually has so much lore that is just amazing that explains a lot and about, oh, I forgot to mention the happiest day, sorry, I forgot to mention the happiest day in FNAF 3 when all the original spirits of the original um, animatronics get set free, but the puppet's face drops last. If you don't know what I'm talking about, watch something from like Matt Pat or somebody. <laughs> it's just so hard. All right. Um Next is FNAF VR. Actually no, I'll do Ultimate Custom Night cuz this does have lore. This is basically when Michael Afton dies in um Freddy Fazbear's Pizza Simulator, like completely just like his spirit's gone. This is his own say personal jail. If you know what I mean? Everything about this game, although it's got some very great, great voice lines, like Ned Bear, or, or dare I say, Mr. Mr. Uh, Mr. Hippo. <laughs> Almost forgot his name for a second. But I like that this is basically just, this is, you know, Ultimate Custom Night with all the, um, or almost all the characters. But they also, or, you know, Scott managed to make lore with it and say it's, you know, William Afton's punishment for after everything he did. Um, all of his creations here are attacking him forever. <laughs> Dark, but yes. Um, Help Wanted. I, I have not played this, but from what I've heard, this is supposed to be great lore-wise. You know, Glitch Trap is in here. Um, or Malhair, if you want to call him that. But... This this is supposed to be a game that was made by, you know, Fazbear Entertainment based on all of the rumors about the franchise, which I think it's it was such a good move to do that. Like, oh, this is Freddy Fazbear's, you know, help wanted game based on all the fake accusations that have developed over time about our franchise and all this stuff. And everybody knows. It's all real. <laughs> it's not fake. Y'all can't cover it up. Anyway, FNAF World, I don't know about the lore with that. I don't know about the lore with Freddy in space. <laughs> I don't know if FNAF AR has any lore either. But that is everything here. This showed us a lot. This also showed us a lot. So did that. So did that. And I guess that'll be a great. I mean, I don't know everything about the lore. I just, I've watched a lot of, you know... Matt Pat and Daco theories and stuff. So I know what's happening in that game. But of course, a quick recap lore wise, this is good because it sets up everything for the entire universe, but there's not a lot of lore. This This is good because it's a prequel, not a sequel, and it shows us more about the lore with the mini games and everything. This is just amazing. It shows us the backstory about, you know, this, the sister location shows the backstory about this and everything and everything. Ah, I only have 15 minutes to talk about this, but I think that is my tier list. No FNAF game has bad lore if you're not including, of course, the ones that I don't think have a lot of lore in them. They might, but I don't know. We're just including the core FNAF games, which is, you know, the canon ones, of course, which, you know, these three down here, they might be canon, but I don't know. But just let me know in the comments if I've messed anything up, because I will be sure to change things, because uh, I don't want to store, or I don't want to start a pop culture war in the comments. Anyway, this is my, my list, and yes.